We're here today to announce Bob Melvin as the manager of the San Diego Padres. A uh, very exciting day for our organization and for Padre fans. Uh, we started this process a month ago with a very clear list of attributes and characteristics we were looking for in our next manager. Um, it, was er it was apparent early in the search process that this was an attractive situation, mainly due to a talented core of players at the big league level, the deep system, and especially the the energy, the passion, and the support that our fans have shown uh, for this team and this group, especially in the last few seasons. With that in mind, uh, I was talking with our baseball ops group, uh, encourage them to cast a wide net of, of possible candidates uh, and to be open-minded in the process, and enabled us to talk to some of the best minds and top leaders in the game over the last month. Uh, but Bob was at that time was at the top of the list for us. A lot of credit goes to the Oakland A's, uh, John Fisher, Billy Bean, David Forst. Uh, when I reached out to Billy and, and broached the topic, uh, the first thing he told me was basically no chance, uh, go to hell. But uh, um, no, he was actually, uh, he was at, uh, I think from my guess is due to loyalty, their friendship, and the great things they've done in, in 11 years together there, uh, he was open-minded and in a very competitive industry, his main question and his main thought to me was, I'm going to do what's best for Bob, uh, which you don't hear a lot in, in this industry. And it sounds like after their conversation, it came back that Bob was curious and, and open-minded about our possibility. Uh, that led to um, us sitting down four or five times over the course of a week, week plus. Bob got a chance to meet uh, other members of our baseball operations team and group. And it became very obvious in those sit-downs why Bob was the top candidate for us in this process. Uh, his, his, uh, you know, his resume speaks for itself. Uh, his experience is 10 years as a major league catcher, um, 2001 winning a World Series ring as a bench coach with the Arizona Diamondbacks, almost nearly two decades as a major league skipper, three-time manager of the year, seven times in the playoffs. Uh, his baseball acumen, attention to detail, uh, and, and you know, incredibly intelligent on the on the field, able to blend information and have it lead to player performance. Uh, his leadership style stands out, holds players accountable. He has honest and tough conversations and looks forward to that with players, while still motivating players to go out and play for him and and for the organization. Uh, it's really remarkable the conversations we had with former players, uh, the respect and connection they felt to Bob as a manager. Uh, guys that were the top part of the roster to other players that filled out the roster, uh, former coaches that coached with him, former staff members. Uh, they just kept coming back to the you know the day-to-day -day dealings with him as a leader, uh, speaking to his his style and the attributes that uh, that we were looking for. Philosophically, from a, from a baseball operations group, very much on the same page uh, with, with with our team about what wins, what works, and what plays at the major league level. Uh, and the number one thing that stood out to me personally. Um, was Bob's burning desire to win a championship as a major league manager, which is probably about the only thing he hasn't done yet in this game as a major league skipper, which uh, fits perfectly in line with the vision of Peter Seidler, Eric Grubner, myself, and our entire Padres organization. So for all of those reasons, we're extremely excited to announce Bob Melvin as the manager of the San Diego Padres. Thank you. Thank you. Are you in Tenure catcher, major league catcher, was probably a little generous. <laughs> um, backup catcher might have been more precise. Go for it. Thanks. They told me to button the top button, but I'm kind of a lower button guy now. Do you want to shake hands with just the fist bump? What's that? Fist bump or shake hands? Fist bump. Thank you. Well, thanks. Uh, what an opportunity. Um, I'm probably as surprised to be here as you all are. Um, you know, going through the process, you know, we, we, we kept it pretty uh, under the radar, which it probably needed to be, um, being that I'd been in Oakland as long as I had. I, I really appreciate, you know, John Fisher and and Billy and David uh, allowing me to go interview here. I wasn't really sure what that would entail afterwards, but 
you know, once I got here and, and met AJ in his gym shorts and his T-shirt and four basketballs sitting behind him, and that kind of was the, the first hook. Um, but having some conversations with him, you know, his passion for baseball is, is immense. You know, we went out and had a couple of dinners, and you would think dinners, dinners are typically a couple hours. They're flicking the lights to get his attention at 1130 because we're having these long baseball conversations. And, and then when I, when I got here and was able to talk to, you know, Mr. Seidler, um, man, what an impressive, what an impressive man and, and, you know, what he's gone through in his life and, you know, what, what he brings to this team, his passion for the people of San Diego stood out right away. Um, and then meeting everybody else and, and listening to the story here. You know, um, Eric I, I met was actually Ted Lasso at the time, and I still expect him to be Ted Lasso. That was his, his Halloween costume, and uh, that, that made it quite the impression on me too. Um, but it, it just, in, and after talking to everybody and, and seeing, you know, what the stories here, and that's before you even talk about the, the players that they have here and the ballpark they have here. I remember when we came here with the, when I was with the A's last season, we came here on a Tuesday night, there were 40,000 people here, and it was electric. You would have thought it was the playoffs, and it resonated with everybody in our, in our dugout. We're all looking around at each other going, wow. And, and that's before, like I said, the ballpark is fantastic. I mean, it is a true destination. Every team that comes here looks at the schedule. They say, when do we go to San Diego? And now with the, the fan base and the enthusiasm here and the roster, I mean, the roster is the real hook. I mean, these you're some of the great players in the game that I know are hungry to bring a championship to San Diego. So listening to this for a couple days was, you know, it was it was really an easy decision to make, and I'd been in a place for for ten plus years. So, you know, it kind of all came together quickly. Uh, I had a great feeling about it from the very beginning, culminating in a day like this. I couldn't be happier. Um, you know, Kelly and Lexi, my wife and daughter, have always been do what you need to do. And uh, to be able to come here and, and, like AJ said, it's all about winning at this point. When you have a roster like that and you have all the people that give you the resources and the backing to do it, I, I don't know that there's a better destination in baseball to be able to come. So I'm a lucky man. Given your long and successful tenure in Oakland, why was now the right time? Why was this the right situation to change? And also, given that you've managed against this ball club, what's the most exciting part now about managing with this group of players in this front office? Well, the last part's the roster. I mean, you, you have some of the, the best players in the game and maybe the most exciting young player in the game, you know, in, in Tatis, uh, Machado, what a stud. He's a, a potential MVP every year. The, the rotation of the guys in the rotation, you know, throughout the bullpen, the entire roster. And, you know, it, it's just, you know, sometimes it just becomes time. And, you know, I was lucky enough to to manage a team for 10 plus seasons. I was the longest tenured guy. I grew up in the Bay Area. It was an, a hometown team of mine. I was absolutely as fortunate as you could be uh, to manage that team. Uh, but there comes a time where it, you, you know it doesn't go forever. And I think, you know, Billy and David were nice enough to, to realize that too and uh, understanding the opportunity that I had here. So it was a surprise. Um, I didn't expect it. But, you know, once I was given the opportunity to listen to the people here, it became clear pretty quickly that this is, was the place for me. Hi, Bob. Welcome to San Diego. Um, can you take us through kind of how this all came about from your perspective and kind of maybe when you started to, like, really consider this as a possibility and maybe just how those deliberations went for you? Yeah, really it was the first conversation I had with AJ. And, is, is, you know, the, he knows this team, you know, inside out. I, appears to me that, that that's about all he does is, is baseball and talk baseball and no baseball and he's you know he's got a scouting background he's you know and, and was able to walk me through what you know what this was all about here so um, you know it was just a call from from Billy telling me that I, I had an opportunity did I want to 
you know, go, go through with it and, and listen to AJ. I live in Arizona. Arizona uh, AJ happened to be in, in Peoria at the time. I went to the complex to talk to him. So it was a bit of a surprise as I was driving there. It was almost surreal in the fact that I was actually going to be talking to another team. I did a little research on the team, and I knew the team from, from being here before. But, you know, I'm driving going, well, what is this really going to be about? And like I said, next thing I knew, we had a great conversation. It was another conversation in the next morning in Peoria, and then a call to, to come to San Diego for a couple days and got to talk to everybody in the organization. And once I was here in San Diego and, you know, how I feel about this ballpark and, and the experiences I had earlier that year, I had a, a, a great feeling that I wanted to do this. I wasn't sure how it was going to play out. Um, but I knew that I was here, that there was probably a chance. And as the days, you know, then there was a two-day process here and uh, a couple more dinners and uh, met, met Mr. Seidler, and then it all came together pretty quickly. Given what you've learned about the investigation, what do you know about why they underachieved and how are you going to contribute to making them a champion? Yeah, I, you know, you would say underachieve. I, I, I don't know. Look, it, they have a really good team, and you know, there every year there are several teams that have a chance to, you know, be world champions. There's even more that have a chance to go to the postseason now with with two wild card teams. Um, if you look at two thirds of the season, it certainly didn't overachieve. It just had a bad third of the season at the wrong time, and they're in a division that's immense. It's it's tough division. So um, I, I don't necessarily think they. You know, underachieved. I think they had a bad period at the end of the season that that ended up ruling the day and not being able to get to the postseason. And they they did get to the postseason the year before. My initial conversations with guys here are that you know this, the sky's the limit for this team. They all are really thirsty to you know not only get back to the postseason but but win a world championship because that's what it's all about. So. We were on the, all on the same page there and looking up and down the roster and you look at other rosters in the leagues. You look at Atlanta right now who's got a chance to win a World Series. I mean, I, I don't personally think there, there are rosters that are, are better. They're probably equivalent, but, but this team's, you know, the next, next, uh, you know, the next big thing for this team and this town and this, uh, this organization is, is getting the postseason, going deep in it and, and you know, wanting and expecting to win a World Series. Bob, uh, Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune. What was the number one thing on your list you needed to hear for this to happen? Just how passionate they were to win. I mean, that's where I am in my career, too. You know, this could be my last stop. And, you know, to, to have that, this type of team, knowing that, you know, that it would culminate my career as well, even though I'm not, it's not about me. Wherever I've been, it's not about me. It's about the team, about, about the process. Everybody has a job to do. Everybody comes together and, and has the same goals. Um, but it just, it just felt like, you know, this team is right on the verge of, uh, of doing that. And, you know, it kind of resonates around here, and I felt it very, very quickly. Hey, Bob. Dennis Lund with The Athletic. Uh, you, you mentioned being the longest tenured manager with one team until right now. How has that experience kind of shaped you as – your, your leadership style, and how do you think you've evolved with the game as it's kind of changed over the last 10 years? Yeah, I think, look, I, you know, I was in Seattle. I was in Arizona. The game has changed a lot, and it's different now, especially when I first started and Pat Gillick uh, hired me in, in, in uh, Seattle in 2003. It is a completely different game right now. Just like in any walk of life, uh, change seems to be accelerating, and so is the game of baseball into a direction that, you know, is is gotten into a hefty balance between analytics and and you know make up traditional type baseball things. I learned a lot about the analytics in Oakland. It was it was a little painful at times early on, based on the fact that I grew up looking at the game a little bit differently. But I think it's made me better. It's opened my mind, opened my eyes that you know any information that you can get, whether it's information that you you know that comes from your experiences and or information that you get from data, if you can marry that, I think that's the best balance. And I think that's what I learned more so in Oakland was there's a different way to look at the game. And, uh, you know, Billy was a guy that was kind of at the forefront of, of the analytics and, and data and information. And, you know, I was lucky enough to be around them for quite a while to, to learn that and know that there's a balance. 
one for each of you. Uh, AJ, what do you think it's going to be like to work with a veteran manager, a guy who's been around for a long, long time? Uh, and what made you comfortable, Bob, uh, working with AJ? Yeah, I think from from uh, you know from my my chair. Yeah, looking forward to it a, a lot. You know, somebody that's obviously tremendous experiences and things that we're all going to lean on and, and grow with. And um, you know, again, I, I think uh, I think just even in the last uh, the last few weeks, it feels like uh, the conversations are easy, they're fun, and and again, well, there's a lot of common ground in terms of you know how you think about the game what we think about what we're trying to do from a you know from a motivation standpoint a winning standpoint um, you know again i think uh, really looking forward to to those conversations continuing here as we as we get going in the next few weeks and months you know you would think you know the, the more of the younger gms presidents gms are, are more analytic based and and i kind of had that assumption coming here and i'm I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case i think it's a, a marriage of both and with his with AJ's scouting background and the way he talked about players and knowing them inside and getting to know these guys and, and you know talking about you know some of the traditional things that I came up with and the blend of of the analytics it just seemed to me like a perfect balance here so it was great to hear that how deep he digs on players and not necessarily just you know trend lines and you know where guys are in their career and expectations and predicting things, which a lot of the analytics do. There's also a makeup component that he understands beautifully, and that is my job too, being in the dugout. You know, to know these guys and what motivates them, and you know, um, just ended up being, you know, exactly what I wanted to hear. Bob, toward the end of last season, there were players who expressed some doubt, some uncertainty about the, the climate in the clubhouse and maybe the way that the organization was going. What's more, most important to you as far as turning things around? How do you create a good culture in there, and what kind of characteristics do you bring forward to get guys to buy in right away? Yeah, I, you know, I really don't know that part of it. I know that when we were here, it was electric. You know, there were medallions flying everywhere, and... And, and, and guys that were looked like they were really enthused to play the game. And, you know, that's at a different level now, too. And that really showed up here, that, that these guys were passionate about what they were doing. So that's the part that I saw. And then you, you balance that with the roster that's here. Um, you know, I didn't follow the last few weeks or the la you know, last couple months. I, you know, I was trying to figure out our, our stuff over there. Um, so look, I'm just going to do the things I've always done in my job, and that's you know be me and try to reach the players and you know make everybody make sure everybody's on the same page, whether it's the staff, whether it's the front office, whether it's the players, whether it's the coaches. I mean, it's it's really important that everybody has the same goals, and and that gets really powerful when everybody is on the same page, and that that is what I want to try to accomplish here is that, look, we have one goal in mind, then you break it down to smaller goals as the season goes along. Uh, you create things that you want to do fundamentally on the field, uh, and then you hold guys accountable to do it because it's important that, you know, when you create something starting in spring training um, and you feel like that's important, you can't get off that. You, you know, at times when you get a little run down and, you know, you don't want to do things or you take a couple of days off from hitting and, you know, you have to be, those are the times that you really have to push a little bit harder and know that, look, it's not going to be perfect over 162 game seasons, but we have to, to be, you know, disciplined in what we're doing the entire year. And, and that's something I hope to create and, and, you know, with the, with the balance of what our goals are going to be and, and a lot of things that we're trying to, to do along the way that start in spring training, um, be disciplined about that the entire season. This is for AJ. AJ, when, when did you realize that Bob might be available and was interested in this job, and what was your reaction? That's a good question. I like to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, again, when we, we started uh, right when the season was over and you kind of put your, your, your wish list and your dream list together, I mean, he was, he was a name that uh, just internally in the office that we were throwing around. Um, Again, I think you know. I think for us, just being open-minded and, and and looking at different situations around the league, um, and I think what we tried to do in the process was was sit and talk to some other candidates. Obviously, Bob's situation being under contract, I think for us, it wasn't going to be where he was going to come in and be one of ten candidates. I think what we tried to do is first uh, first couple of weeks in the process, 
go out and find other other candidates that, that that were available at that time that we could connect with, with the idea that hey, at the right point in time, reach out to Billy, um, and, and Oakland, and just see you know if we got to a point where compare Bob to to the other candidates that we had looked at, um, because again, you have to be respectful of their franchise, their organization, what they're trying to do on, on that front. So that's the way we try to attack it over the last few weeks. Hi, Bob. Uh, ben Higgins, ABC 1097.3, The Fan. You managed some really good young players in Oakland who turned into all-stars and MVP candidates. Uh, can you encapsulate how that will affect your approach with Fernando Tatis Jr. early in his career? Yeah, I mean, you know, it started back in, in Oakland early on. Joanna Cespedes, you know, I was really close with him. Um, Josh Donaldson, who was really a triple-A catcher at the time when we brought him to the big leagues. Um, you know, now the Olsons and the Chapmans and those guys. So I do have a history with, with young players, and I love young players. I mean, the, they're the backbone of your team, really. I mean, it, it's, it's a blend. It's a balance of guys. There are veterans here. There are young players here. But it's the young players that kind of push the, the veterans these days. It used to be the other way around where, you know, it was all about the veterans and the, and the young players come in and they bide their time and they earn their stripes. I've found that leadership can come from any dynamic, any player. And I think what, in Oakland, we, were, we allowed the younger players, if they had the intangibles to be leaders, to lead right away. Not, look, you got to wait three years to do this. Matt Chapman, the minute he got to Oakland, he was a leader, and we embraced that. So, you know, the younger players these days, and I, don't, I can't think of a, a better younger player than Fernando Tatis right now. Uh, who, who not only is going to be a star, he's, you can't take your eyes off him on the field and looks to be a, a really confident guy that, that the team looks to, you know, get inspiration from. So that's an easy one for me is, is, is knowing the, you know, and dealing with good young players and, the, and then getting to learn him and, and understand what moves him and, you know, to do the best I can to bring out the best in him. Hi, Bob. Uh, Marty Caswell from Extra 1360. Uh, your pitching coach is already in place. Do you expect to have the full authority and final word on the rest of your coaching staff? And do you, do you see any, any coaches from Oakland coming over? I don't know yet. We're going to talk about it here in the coming days. And, and the, no, I'm not going to have – that, that comes from everybody. I mean, you want input from everybody. Uh, you also want people in, in the Padre organization, the good people in development, to have a chance to – to get to the big leagues too. And something, in, you know, in Oakland, I don't think we, we, every coaching change I think we've had there in the last five or six years have been internal. Now, with a new manager from another organization, there's gonna be a blend of that. But I wanna hear about what we have here in the organization. I'll probably have a few names to throw out there too, but we wanna get it right as a complete staff. It's not just gonna be me saying, this is who I want. And AJ, with someone with, with Bob's caliber, how were you able to acquire him without giving up any compensation to the A's? Yeah, I think, again, I think uh, that, that really goes to Oakland, just looking for what's, what's best for Bob, and I think the appreciation for what he did there in a decade. Um, so I think each, each group, each organization is probably a little bit different. I think it just speaks to, again, like, you know, uh, John Fisher, Billy Bean, David Forrest, those guys looking for what's best for, for their group and, and really honestly looking at what was best for Bob at that time. Darn it, Trip, NBC7. Bob, welcome to San Diego. Thank uh, you. Padres, uh, in a sense, kind of embody the changing personality of baseball. As a manager that's been around the game for a long time, when you see the, kind of the energy, the enthusiasm they play with, and the way they've kind of pushed back on some of the old norms, what's your thought and outlook on that? Yeah, I don't know that there really are old norms anymore. That, that line has really kind of been wiped out now. And I think it's good for the game, too. You know, the, the game probably needed some enthusiasm, some, you know, we had, you know, Mark Hanna in, in Oakland with bat flipping season. And, you know, for, for veteran guys, it, you know, you have to acclimate to that. But that's been an easy part for me. Um, and I think, you know, if you want to have a younger fan base, I think it resonates with them, the enthusiasm and, and, and you know, the individualism yet – in a team atmosphere, I think is really good for the game, and it resonates here probably as well as anywhere anywhere else.